Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at the brand new Solid Translate tool that was just released from the team over at CAD Sharp. And this tool is absolutely epic. What it lets you do is take a SolidWorks part file and translate it into an on-shape document. And by translate, I don't mean you just, you know, open the SolidWorks part in on shape and you're left with a dumb solid. No, no, no. The solid translate tool will actually go through and examine the entire SolidWorks part tree, all the sketches, all the features, all the dimensions, and it'll rebuild that with a parametric tree in on shape. So you actually end up with a tree that you can edit. You can double click, change dimensions. You get a true parametric tree when you open the document in on shape. And that is a truly impressive feat. I mean, I don't even think there's a tool that can let you do that going from SolidWorks into 3D Experience. So this is something that is really, really impressive. I'm really excited to see how this thing works. So I figured today we'll open up some models from the Too Tall Toby library and we'll see how things go. Ow. So here we can see the first part that we're gonna try to run through Solid Translate. This part is called Half Clamp and it comes from the 2023 CAD vs CAD tournament. This is a pretty simple part. It just has a few features in the tree. I have gone through and renamed these features and you can see here kind of how this model tree was built in SolidWorks. So in order to run Solid Translate, you're gonna need three things. You're gonna need a locally installed seat of SolidWorks. You're gonna need the download of the Solid Translate executable, link down below in the description. And you're gonna need a license of Onshape and you need that to be up and running in the web browser. Once you have those three things, you can double click on the Solid Translate executable and that will launch the program. Now, one thing to note, when you launch the Solid Translate executable, you're gonna get this tab in your web browser that says that it's looking for Onshape authentication. So just accept that and then you can return to the tab that has your Onshape documents. All right, now we're ready to take a look at the Solid Translate user interface and we're gonna break this down into four sections. First of all, we've got our source. This is where we point to our SOLIDWORKS file or files to translate. And although you can do it in bulk, I recommend you just do one part at a time until you really start to understand the options and the workflow. Next, we've got an area for our destination. This is gonna be an on-shape document URL. This is where the translated information will be rebuilt into an on-shape part tree. So usually what I do is make a new on-shape document and then I grab the URL from the web browser and paste it into this field. Next, we've got a section for our options in Solid Translate, and we'll talk more about these options in a different video. For today's video, I'm just gonna use a simple set of options that kinda brute force everything through regardless of errors. And finally, we've got the start button. The start button will initiate the translation process and hopefully leave us with an on-shape part, which has a parametric feature tray. All right, so let's get this thing started. We'll double click here and then we will choose this half clamp as our source file for the translation. Then we'll go into this field for URL. We'll head over to Onshape and create a new document. And then we're gonna be able to grab this URL from up at the top of the web browser. And this is gonna be the destination. This is where our new translated part file will be built. Then down at the bottom of the screen, we've got our options. And like I said earlier, we're not really gonna talk about the advanced options today. What I like to do when I'm getting started is just use these two options on the end here, ignore unsupported and ignore validation errors. And basically what this means is that you're always gonna get something translated in on shape, but it's not always gonna be pretty. And if you start learning about some of those other options, you'll learn how to handle situations where you're trying to translate a feature that is not supported. We can get into that in a future video, but for now, let's get ready to press the start button. We just need to do one more thing before we hit the start button, and that is to close our session of SolidWorks. I find that this tool works best if you begin with SOLIDWORKS closed. So now let's click that start button and kick off our very first Solid Translate from SOLIDWORKS into Onshape. 
So this part's pretty simple. It's not gonna take too long to translate. And what we'll see is that about halfway through the translation process, a new tab shows up in Onshape. If we click on this tab, we can actually see the step-by-step -step building process that Solid Translate is using. So it's going sketch by sketch, dimension by dimension, feature by feature, and recreating the entire parametric tree from SolidWorks into Onshape. When we're done, we see we get a nice translation report to make sure that everything is matching with the original design. And of course, since this model is a parametric feature tree, we can go back into one of our sketches, edit that sketch, and start making changes by simply double clicking on a dimension and increasing this radius and maybe increasing the diameter of this hole, leaving us with a parametrically modified part translated into on shape. Pretty cool stuff. Now this is a simple part, so let's take a look at another part, maybe something that's just a little bit more complex. So for this part, it's a little bit more complicated, and I've just brought up an image of the SolidWorks environment. SolidWorks is not really open. I just wanted you to see a side-by-side -side comparison. So once again, Solid Translate begins by dissecting the SolidWorks tree, and then we're gonna get an additional tab in Onshape, and if we click on that tab, we can watch Solid Translate rebuilding this model. And something that's pretty cool about this model is the ribs have some problems, and Solid Translate automatically corrects the issue. So we saw it with that rib in the very back, and we're gonna see it again here with this next rib that's in the middle of the part. So here we see the sketch for the rib is created, and then the rib itself is created, and Solid Translate recognizes that the volume volume of that rib does not match the volume of the original. And so Solid Translate goes in and makes some adjustments until it's able to validate that feature. See, I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching Solid Translate building this model. And I think it's pretty cool that Solid Translate can kind of iteratively troubleshoot that feature until the geometry matches the original geometry which came from the SolidWorks translation. How about sheet metal parts? No. <laughs> the, there are some limitations of what the Solid Translate tool can and can't do, and currently sheet metal is not supported, but hopefully we'll see it in the future. For now, if you try to run a sheet metal part through the translator, you're just going to end up with a bunch of errors in the tray. So let's translate one final model to kind of round out the video. This is a pretty cool model in SolidWorks. It's got some contour selection used in this first feature. It's also got some contour selection used in this hole with the notch in it. And that's a feature that's very interesting during the translation. We also see that this model uses hole wizard for the counter bores and uses a curved slot, which is mirrored. So let's press start here and see how Solid Translate handles some of these features. And in the beginning, it's a pretty standard translation. Solid Translate dissects the tree, and then we can see we can click on a new tab and watch the model being built. But it's this feature here, the hole with a little notch in it, that Solid Translate kind of struggled with. It did it once, and then it kind of did it again, and then it still couldn't solve the issue, and so Solid Translate was able to just do a delete body and I thought that was a really interesting solution and really shows the versatility of Solid Translate. It seems like it's got a number of different decision paths it can go down to ultimately result in a model which has the same geometry as the SolidWorks source file. So I've only been using Solid Translate for a few days and I'm certainly no expert, but I gotta say that overall, I am very impressed with this product. They've really done a nice job of taking into consideration some of the more nuanced differences between SolidWorks and Onshape and the way different features solve. And they've given you some nice tools to address those differences, whether it's the automatic solvers, like some of the things that we saw in this video, or the interactive tools that we'll talk about in a future video. You really should be able to have some great success with any of your prismatic or machined models. So give that a try. And if there's any models or model types you want me to try, let me know down in the comments and I'll definitely make a follow-up video showing you how I could translate some of those files. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, let me know that as well. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next video.